Hello, good day everyone. This is Sir Jet and welcome to another episode of the History Lectures. Today our lesson is Marcus's Proclamation 1081, otherwise known as the Martial Law Proclamation. Are you ready? Let's get started. Last time we talked about World War II and we ended with how the Philippines got liberated. So now I will bridge first the gap between World War II and martial law. So you will know the context of our Proclamation 1081. Remember that um, during World War II we were uh, training for self-rule, for independence. The Commonwealth government was training in the U.S. and finally we completed the training and so the U.S. granted us independence on July 4, 1946. Now this is our original celebration of Independence Day for many many years in the Third Republic. When I say Third Republic, that is the time between World War II and martial law. Now today our Independence Day is June 12. Now how did that happen? When did the shift happen? It happened in 1962. The president then was Josdado Macapagal and uh, he had a rift with the Americans, some disagreements regarding the compensation of the World War II soldiers, Filipino soldiers the veterans. The American government wouldn't give money or benefits to the Filipino soldiers who fought in World War II. And uh, to get back at the Americans, Josdado Macapagal changed the Independence Day from July 4 to June 12 because June 12, according to him, is a uh, pro-Filipino Independence Day because uh, July 4 is pro-US it was given to us now what happened on June 12 of 1962 is that there's a big big celebration at the Luneta Grandstand and after uh, the speech of uh, Makapagal he brought out a man an old man on a wheelchair and he paraded the old man on the wheelchair around the oval of the uh, Quirino Grandstand which was known as the Luneta Grandstand at that time. Who is that man on the wheelchair? Yes, your guess is correct. None other than Emilio Aguinaldo. He was still alive in 1962 and he was holding the original flag that he waved in Kawit Cavite in 1898 as he was being paraded in the Luneta Grandstand and all the people were cheering, clapping their hands and shouting and, if, and finally the old man had his day of glory. Finally, the Independence Day, he declared in 1898, that's more than half a century earlier, is finally recognized. Amazing. Probably that's the last time you will hear about Aguinaldo in our lectures because uh, he died in 1964. Yes. Can you imagine the, the old man Aguinaldo had a very long life. He was uh, born during the time when electricity was not yet invented and all the islands in the Philippines uh, had darkness after after sundown and he died in a time in the 1960s when uh, every house in the Philippines had electricity or almost every house at least in the urban centers and he was able to see the era of colored photography and he was able to watch ABS-CBN <laughs> yes, he was able to even hear the music of the Beatles 
she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aguinaldo was able to hear all those things. That's a very long life for him. And uh, anyway, the Third Republic, that's uh, between the World War II and martial law, the constitution that was in effect at that time was the 1935 constitution. That was the constitution, by the way, is the rule book, the highest rule book in the land. And it governs all the other smaller laws that we have in the country. And our rule book in uh, the Third Republic was made in 1935. And it was uh, being used for a long, long time. Now, that rule book states that the presidents of the Philippines shall have a four-year term. Okay, so today we use a different constitution because our presidents have six-year term. Now, the president, according to that uh, rule book that they use in, at that time, can be re-elected once. So if you perform well, the people love you, you can have another four-year term. And so, therefore, you will have a maximum of eight years in Malacanang. Now, who are the presidents of the Third Republic? In 1946, we began the Third Republic with Manuel Rojas. And then uh, he died of a heart attack two years in office. And he was replaced by El Pidio Quirino. And then uh, after El Pidio Quirino, the president was Ramon Magsaysay, but he died in the plane crash. And so his vice president replaced him. That's Carlos Garcia. And after Carlos uh, Garcia, we had uh, Justado Macapagal, the president who changed the Independence Day. And then after Macapagal, we had Marcos. Okay, 1965. Marcos was our president. Since it's a four-year term, his uh, first term ended in 1969. Now, how do we characterize Marcos's first term? It was excellent. Yes, believe it or not, he was really a good president in his first term. Everybody was satisfied. He was uh, a man of uh, action. Here's an example. He built 17,000 classrooms in his first six months in office. And that's a lot of classrooms in the public school system. First six months, huh? But uh, compared him to uh, Makapagal, his uh, predecessor, who only built 500 classrooms in four years. So who is the better president in terms of action. Very obvious. And then Marcos also built the NLEX, the SLEX that you see today, and several other highways, especially in the Ilocos region. And then the San Juan Nico Bridge, the longest bridge in the Philippines connecting the islands of Samar and Leyte, the home province of uh, his wife Imelda. And this were really a very, very impressive infrastructure projects. And thus, Marcos got re-elected for a second term. Now, the second term is also four years. It began in 1969. And if you count four years, the end of the second term would be 1973. Now, 1973 would be his dead end. He cannot run for re-election. But the presidential election of 1973 never happened. Why? Because Marcos declared martial law a year before the election. The effect of that, the declaration of martial law, is actually he uh, abolished the rule book. 1935 constitution because the rule book says his maximum term is eight years but if you throw away the rule book then the eight year rule would be thrown out of the window as well and that's the technique he used to stay in power longer so the re-election never happened and Marcos 
was able to stay in power until 1986. So that's a total of 21 years in power. Now, martial law is uh, something very uh, unique compared to the normal situation of the country. What exactly is martial law? Where did that word come from? Hmm? Martial is the root word. Okay? Uh, or the word martial rather comes from the root word Mars. Yes, the planet and the Roman god of war. So when you say martial, it means uh, something that describes Mars, something that describes the god of war. So when you say uh, martial law, that means the rule of the military. Why military? Who are the warriors? Who are the men of war in a society? The military. That means the military will be ruling over the civilians. The normal democratic setup is that the civilians are on top of the military. The ones that are rule the land, that govern, would be civilians. And the military would just be there to protect the state. But in martial law, it's the other way around. The military people are on top of the civilians. And you know military discipline? Have you, uh, have you been in an ROTC or CAT class? Everything the officer says must be obeyed without complaint. If he says that's an order, then you have to obey. And if the military says that to the civilians, you cannot really uh, talk back. You just have to obey. That is martial law. Now, who is the highest man in the military? There's a man higher than the five-star general. And he's called the commander-in-chief. And the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Philippines is none other than the president of the republic. So the president of the republic is both a civilian and a military man. And when he is uh, uh, on top of the military, all the generals would obey at his word. So when it's martial law time, the president can just dictate anything to the military and the military will execute it and all the people must obey. Therefore, martial law means also a dictatorial form of government, military style. Obey and obey before you complain. Now what happens to the other officers of the government during martial law? When Marcos declared martial law, he abolished the existing constitution, as I've mentioned a while ago. So no more 1935 constitution. All the rules in that book are gone and with it is the congress the congress these are the uh, group of lawmakers aside from the representatives or congressmen as we call them there are also senators so when marcos declared martial law he is essentially firing all these legislators because what he says will be the law no more debating in congress no more uh, process of uh, hearings and very long process of debating in the Senate on how uh, a law would be passed. No more because as a military man, as uh, the commander-in-chief, what he says is the law automatically. So no more Congress during martial law. That means he has the full legislative functions. Legislative means lawmaking. You don't need senators anymore. And then he is also assuming full executive functions. What he says, it must be executed right away by the military or any person that he ordered to obey. 
martial law is legal and constitutional. Yes, it's provided in the 1935 Constitution. That uh, rule book says that the president can declare martial law. This is not an illegal thing. It's allowed if and only if the country is in chaos. If the country is troublesome, if uh, peace and order is hard to get, the president can declare martial law to put things in order. The, set, the 1935 Constitution says so. And Marcos availed that clause in the 1935 Constitution. Proclamation 1081. This is the document stating that the whole country is being placed under martial law. This is the primary source that you will study on your own after this lecture. So I'm giving you now the background of that primary document. According to Proclamation 1081, Marcos cited that the country was in chaos. Okay, so he is not declaring Proclamation 1081 from out of the blue. Just because he wanted to stay in power, he wouldn't say that directly. But he mentioned certain chaos, certain troubles brewing in the country. And he is being forced to declare martial law to save the republic. That is the gist of the proclamation 1081. Marcos is saying that the country is in deep trouble. And the last straw that caused him to declare martial law was the ambush of his defense secretary Juan Ponce Enrile on September 22 of 1972. Yes, uh, Enrile was already alive <laughs> and he was a, a politician already in 1972. Just like Aguinaldo, he has a very, very long life. He is uh, Marcos's defense secretary. And he was allegedly ambushed by NPA rebels. His car was riddled with bullets. Good thing that uh, Enrile was not in the car at that time. So he, he didn't get hurt in that ambush. Now I put some uh, ex, what do you call this, uh, quotation marks uh, on the word ambush. Because during the EDSA revolution, Juan Ponce Enrile admitted to the public that it was just a staged ambush. It was scripted. It's just a skit. So as to make a picture that the country was in chaos. That top government officials are vulnerable to the attacks of the NPA rebels. And uh, so uh, there's the quotation marks there. But anyway, Marcos used that incident, whether it's uh, staged or real, to justify the proclamation of martial law. Now, the document 1081 was signed on September 21. Okay, so that's the official day, the martial law day. I think when I was a little boy, that was a holiday. September 21, no class. It's a, uh, I think it's called Bagong Lipunan Day, if I'm not mistaken. I was a little boy then, I can't uh, really uh, recall uh, exactly, but it's a special day, September 21. And the broadcast was done on September 23. Okay, the broadcast that uh, Marcos is proclaiming martial law. So in other words, the document slept in the shelf for around two days. Marcos signed it, and then it's in, it's on the shelf, and then nobody know, knows that uh, martial law was already signed. And then on the 23rd of uh, September, everybody was shot at around uh, 7 p.m. All television programs were canceled. And what they saw on TV was this image. Marcos.
Marcos reading the primary document or uh, actually explaining it in front of the camera saying that I am putting the whole country under martial law and now it's time for you to read the primary document yourself and uh, see for yourself judge for yourself if the country was really in chaos how troublesome was the situation back then that Marcos needed to declare martial law very interesting what you will read is the actual document that he is uh, holding there on the table all right this is Sergeant saying see you around